Namaste. Greetings from Netrudhama. I blocks the cutting edge. Today we are covering subtenance block or parabalba block, peribalba block or extraconal block, and lastly retrobalba block or intraconal block. The objectives of these eye blocks are good analgesia, adequate anesthesia of the fifth cranial nerve trigeminal, akinesia or motor block of the third, fourth and sixth cranial nerves and also to minimize any patient discomfort and anxiety under topical anesthesia by supplementing with regional anesthesia and to reduce the need for GA in some of the cases. The relevant vascular anatomy is we need to know the tiger country. One is superior, two is superior medial, too many blood vessels, three superolateral, inferior and lastly inferolateral, especially in axial myops, presence of staphyloma and buckles. A thorough preanesthetic evaluation noting the bleeding risks and ophthalmic block safety checklist ensuring that we know the maximum safe doses for our patient. We have 2% lignocaine, 0.5% bupivacaine or ropivacaine 0.75%, adjuvants like hyaluronidase 15 units per ml and dexmet 20 mics. Test doses recommended for all of them. Good patient preparation includes explanation, vital signs monitoring, obtaining IV access and IV sedation when required. Preparation of equipment includes the crash car too. Stop before you block. Verify the site and the site with the patient. Mark the block site and confirm with your assistant. Let's go to the subtenance block. The subtenance space is the potential space around the eyeball between the sclera and the tenance capsule also known as the episclera. The indications of this block are all ophthalmic surgeries, contraindications being active infection, inability to cooperate of the patient, scleral buckle, inability to lie flat. Advantages being good analgesia and akinesia, good quality block, lower risk of sight threatening complications, safer in eyes with long axial length. The kit includes the wire speculum, non-tooth forceps, curved blunt tip spring scissors and curved blunt tip 20 or 19 gauge subtenance cannula. The eye is prepared with 0.5% paracaine and 5% betadine eye drops. Prepare the eye thoroughly. Insert the eye speculum very carefully. Patient is asked to look upwards, outwards. The conjunctiva is grasped with the non-tooth forceps in the inferior nasal quadrant. Small cut is made with the scissors 5 to 7 mm from the limbus. And it's followed by blunt dissection. A blunt curved cannula is attached to the 5 ml syringe, advanced into the subtenance space, keeping the tip in contact with the sclera. It is passed deep to the tenon's fascia extending beyond the equator. 4 ml of the local anesthetic is slowly injected approximately 1 ml every 3 seconds with slight rotation of the syringe along its long axis so as to direct the local anesthetic in the different directions within the posterior subtenon space. After withdrawal of cannula and careful removal of speculum, gentle digital pressure is applied to the closed lids over the site of the conjunctival incision for two minutes. Now we check for adequate akinesia. Some tips and tricks for subtenance block. Use half strength povidone. Stay on line of longitude. Stay equidistance between the inferior and the medial rectus. Keep the tip of the cannula touching the sclera. Apply digital gentle pressure. Avoid ocular massage. Use less than 5 ml. Avoid pterygium and care with scleral buckles. 
some of the complications being subconjunctal hemorrhage, chemosis, extraocular paresis, cellulitis, etc. A punctal dilator is a great alternate to your scissor. Let us go on to the peribulbar block or the extraconal block. The solution is deposited within the orbit but not entering the muzzle cone, therefore offering a measure of safety. The traditional peribulbar block is no longer recommended as the inferior lateral injection can da uh, damage the inferior rectus muzzle, the vessel supply, the inferior oblique muzzle causing diplopia. The superior medial injection is in a very vascular space, the tiger zone, and hence hemorrhage can occur. Now, the modern peribulbar block is recommended. Advantages of modern peribulbar block are less chances of RBH, perforation of the eye and intradural injection. The disadvantages being periorbital ecchymosis and chemosis. Also an increased risk of RBH compared to the subtenance block. Now let us look at the block. The peribulbar kit includes the paracaine and the betadine eye drops, the local anesthetic and the 5 ml syringe with a 23 gauge 1 inch needle. Eye is prepared with all the aseptic precautions. The patient's eye is kept in the primary gaze by asking them to look straight ahead. The first injection in the extreme inferior lateral corner, which is at the junction of the floor and the lateral wall of the orbit is selected. The needle is inserted downwards, backwards, along the floor of the orbit with the bevel facing the globe. About 5 ml of the local anesthetic is injected very slowly. Gentle digital pressure is given to the eye. The second injection with a 26 gauge half inch needle, medial canthal block between the medial canthal fold and the caruncle is given. After withdrawing, about 3 to 4 ml local anesthetic is injected slowly. Gentle intermittent digital pressure is then given to the eye. We check for akinesia in all the four directions. Retrobulbar block or intraconal block is in the retrobulbar space located behind the globe of the eye. Retrobulbar block demo. After preparing the eye properly, the inferior orbital rim is palpated, the needle is inserted at the junction of the medial two-third and lateral one-third perpendicular through the inferior eyelid at 10 degrees inclination. One centimeter after penetrating the orbital septum, needle is redirected 30 degrees superonasally for 2.5 centimeters till the intraconal space. Aspirate the syringe and slowly inject 2 to 4 ml of the anesthetic agent. Cautiously remove the needle. Now, With the eye closed, we need to apply pressure with gauze to prevent any hemorrhage and increase the diffusion of the anesthetic agent. Monitor for any retrobulbar hemorrhage. We can assess the degree of akinesia and the anesthesia two minutes after the injection has been given. This is not recommended anymore and it is definitely a lost art. The systemic complications of ophthalmic blocks are local anesthetic systemic toxicity, brainstem anesthesia, oculocardiac reflex, anaphylaxis and acute pulmonary edema and cardiac arrhythmias. Coming to the conclusion, subtenance block is the technique of choice. It provides safe anesthesia, has fewer risk. Modern peribulbar block is a safe alternative in trained hands. No technique is entirely risk-free. Knowledge of the relevant anatomy, characteristics of local anesthetic agents, and appropriate training in the block techniques will allow the practitioner to perform effective and safe orbital anesthesia. Thank you.